Okay. Yeah. Thank. Uh, thank you for this introduction and so on. So the title of my talk is Disturbance Propagation in Power Grids with High Converter Penetration. It is really good to follow up on uh, Professor Green's uh, presentation because he show you all the converter models which I will skip in my presentation. Okay. So um, uh, this is a really a, a group effort from from multiple investigators uh, from uh, multiple institutions. But I have to say that we were all part of the uh, the U.S. NSF and DOE current engineering research center at the time when this paper was written. And I'm I would like to acknowledge Professor Han Tao Choi, uh, who did the lion's share of the work, and also to Stavos, uh, who did the the con who did the control part of the the the, the paper. So. The, the part of this uh, motivation for doing this study is to really look at the concern about system inertia going down because of the inverter-based resources. Okay, and the question is, how do we actually quantify the inertia de decrease? How do we visualize it, and how we can see there's any IBR controls, inverter-based controls that can actually add inertia back to the power grid. Now you do have to understand that that's really, you know, we are really not adding inertia in the traditional sense of uh, inertia of a synchronous machine to the system, but we are actually adding inertia through control. So, uh, and the, the, the illustration we are using is looking at electromechanical wave propagation, okay? This is power system disturbance spreading uh, across the network as electromechanical waves. And this is not to be confused with electromagnetic uh, waves propagation, which is really not dependent on the machine inertia. Okay, so we have some really pioneer work uh, by Sam Lian, Hauer, and Jim Thought on um, studying this, but most of those were analyzing radio systems and ring systems, okay? And we feel that this is a good tool for us to understand the uh, impact of uh, um, inertia. Okay, so let <clears throat> before we start, I thought it would be kind of uh, illuminating to actually look at a disturbance recording with uh, PMU uh, data. And this is a disturbance uh, uh, of a nuclear power plant trip and followed by overshedding of low. So there was a over frequency wave coming out of Florida. And, and this is where Florida is, if you're not familiar with the US uh, geography. And this recording is from uh, FNET, uh, from Professor Ilu Liu. And you can actually see it on the current ELC website. Uh, as the video is played, notice that the, the red orange and yellow color is over frequency. That means it's hot, okay? And then the purple and the blue part is under frequency. Okay, so let me go and play it. And you can see that there's a wave coming out from the uh, from Florida, or move it going all the way to Manitoba, Canada, and also to uh, to uh, Maine in, in, the, in the US. And then on the left side is actually the, the, the PMU recordings. So I'm going to play it, and you can see that now the wave starts in Florida. It went all the over frequency went all the way north, and then there's a bunch of waves bouncing back and forth. Okay, this is what you would expect when you try to understand a large power system. Uh, what you know because of the work that's been done by the previous uh, researchers, we can actually get uh, analytical propagation speed for homogeneous uniform radio grids. So the question that we have is that, uh, what happened to the propagation speed if we have uh, converter-based resources with no inertia, okay? And then the second uh, question is that, uh, can we extend it to two-dimensional systems? Because as you can see, most power grids are actually uh, a mesh system and not a radio system. So we start 
with a radio system and keep it simple. And the idea is that we have a uniform system going from uh, uh, from uh, uh, back up from uh, uh, a chain of generators, and the disturbance that and the power flow goes from left to right. And the disturbance that we are going to do is to trip the circuit breaker. So what happened is that there's deficiency in in in, in uh, generation. So there is going to be a uh, uh, under frequency wave going from left to right. Okay. So the, uh, the if you model this network as infinitesimally small length and machine inertia, you can actually model this as a partial differential equation, which is a, in this case is a wave equation, which is listed here. Okay. And then the you can analytical calculate that the propagation speed is given by the um, the peptons of the, the, the infinitesimal line at times this conversion factor of uh, 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 per unit frequency to radians per second over the inertia of, of e each of the machines. And then this is actually a simulation and, a, and the idea is to figure out how, how fast these waves are traveling so if we use this as a threshold for the arrival of the uh, of the wave, you can actually see that uh, it takes time for the wave to go all the way to the last machine, and then by the time the last machine frequency drops, you can actually measure the so-called propagation time. And you can actually see that in this numerical simulation, it actually you can calculate C quite well. Okay, the um, so now let's figure out what happens when we start re replacing these generators with converters. So, uh, so the, what we are, what we are in order to compare apple with apple, what we do is that we take each of the generators and reduce its uh, uh, power output and then replace it with a converter. Okay, so we do it uniformly. It turns out in this case you can still uh, um, calculate that the uh, that the the propagation speed is going to be faster. And instead of k, square root of k omega over m, now m is uh, modulated by a number that's smaller than one, where rho is actually the uh, uh, the uh, replacement portion. And what we do is, of course, all the, all the generators being replaced. And here we show uh, a simulation of uh, the uh, increase of the speed for 25% replacement, 50% replacement, and 75% replacement, the green curve, which is coming in all three plots, uh, is the original uh, arrival time at the last generator. And then you can see that now with 25% renewable generation, you know, the wave is coming in faster. And then all these things will, uh, the more you, resource you have, the wave just go a lot faster as you can see, okay? So uh, now, if you use a grid forming control for the converter, okay, which means that you have some frequency regulation, and this is emulating some inertia in, in the, uh, for the network. And the question is that, how well can you do with the emulation? Okay, so, uh, so here, this is the, uh, uh, oh, by the way, uh, the models that we use, the renewable resource model that we use for grid following, grid forming, you can find it in the paper. Okay, and then what you can see is that the uh, um, uh, uh, this orange curve, uh, again, these are when you have uh, a replacement of in, uh, inertia and so on, and you can see that the uh, the solid line is with the grid forming control and uh, the dotted line is without control. And so you can see that you actually in, in, you know, increase the amount of iner the apparent inertia that you can have, okay? And we can also show that if you apply some voltage control, you actually manage to do a little slow down the way even better because then you make the system uh, uh, stiffer. Now, one of the things that you can try to say is that, you know, can you do better than that? You know, um, can you actually really slow it down? It turns out that, yes, you can, okay? And 
the, the reason that we can do this is that you can change the power injection of inverters very quickly, a lot faster than what you can do with conventional generators or even with hydraulic units and so on. Okay. And so the idea here is that it's the following, you know, so you have these branches and you have renewable uh, injections at, at bus one and bus two. And somehow if this, if there is a change of power flow on this line, what you can do is that you can, uh, you know, use a proportional control to adjust P1 and P2 so that you can maintain this flow. And that, of course, means that you need a little bit extra headroom on these renewable resources so that they can, where needed, uh, generate uh, uh, additional power. And this is an interesting plot in the sense that this is the frequency of the last generator with that particular uh, under frequency wave. And without the act, so this renewable active control, you know, you, you expect that the frequency will drop. But it turns out that if you start exercising these kind of active power control, your fre the frequency at the very tail end is not going to even drop below, uh, drop to the, the so-called the, uh, the threshold that we checked arrival time, okay? Uh, how much power do you need? Okay, so this is the uh, um, uh, um, the, the injection at the various uh, wind turbines, and of course, the wind turbine closest to the to to the at the very beginning is going to do a whole lot more work than the 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 inverters at at the tail end. Now let's switch to, to the two-dimensional system, and this is a topic that's not really touched upon by previous publications. So the way that we model this two-dimensional system is like what we did for, for the radio system, except that now we have a, a, a square, we have a matrix, okay, with uniform uh, uh, connections and uniform inertia and so on, okay? And then for this system, you, you now, uh, for people who study flexible structures know that you actually need to uh, uh, look at the, the equation uh, equation for a flexible plate or a membrane, okay? And then the speed constant has the same uh, form as the one-dimensional electromechanical wave. And then, but this is, the, the solution is a lot trickier because now you have boundary conditions and you have initial conditions. So the study that we did is that we're going to, again, connect a generator to the, the north west corner, and then we trip this generator, so you have an under frequency, you have an over, uh, you have a, a frequency wave to go further uh, uh, all the way down to the, uh, the, the lower right hand corner, and you're also going to expect that the frequency is going to uh, bounce back, okay? So, uh, so this is a, uh, and you can solve it as either a partial differential equation or a uh, um, uh, 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 ordinary differential equation. And if you do it in a partial differential equation, you can actually visualize the, the surge in the frequency going forward and going to the all the way to the back. And then when you get to the uh, end, uh, it, it starts bouncing back. And uh, the ODE solution comes out to be in the same shape, but of course the, the images are, are, are not as dramatic. Okay, the um, uh, the PDE is, is really a, a, a lot nicer. Um, now I lost track of time. Do I have time or shall I just conclude at this point? You can just quickly wrap it up, but, but it's fine. Maybe two minutes and then, yeah. Okay, so two yeah. minutes, then I'm fine. <laughs> uh, so let's go back to the, to the, uh, um, uh, uh, the the for the system event that we have we have to look at and so what happened is that the actual measurement this is corresponding to a 2.3 gigawatt load shedding and you can see that the uh, this is the for the frequency it swings the most and then what happened if you see the the wave going up about five or Ten seconds later, going to a uh, main, going to Maine, and going to uh, Manitoba, and then you can do a simulation with using a 500 bus model. 
Okay. And now, so, so the, uh, uh, this turns out that we actually were able to approximate the, for the event quite well. What I don't, uh, if you want, if you read the paper, you will actually find uh, that when we, when we do the two dimensional system, when we do the, uh, we put in the inverter resources, and then, uh, and you will actually see the similar uh, increase in speed of the electromechanical wave. So, in conclusion, uh, I think that uh, checking the impact on inertia using these kind of electromechanical wave propagation is, is actually a very meaningful way of doing it. And so, uh, and these systems are very easy to set up and you can actually you know, put in your control for the renewable resource and you can actually check, okay. And then the, uh, in, in terms of future work, uh, what happens with the renewables when you have looking at the impact on protection systems, and then additional methods to look at how do you how you actually contain the uh, spread of electromechanical wave, and so that you don't get these spectacular oscillations going from Florida to uh, to Maine and to no Manitoba. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, the the paper is listed at the bottom of the page. So uh, if you have any questions on the paper, feel free to uh, send the question to any of the authors. Thank you.